Right, hi everyone, uh, and welcome to the very last of the 2001 Technical Workshop Series under the ASEAN Paul Army Worm Action Plan. My name is Alison Watson. I'm very pleased to be moderating this session, and I'm joined by Dr. Ivan Cruz from Embrapa in Brazil today as our expert speaker. I also have the ASEAN Paul Army Worm Action uh, Plan Project Assistants, Futra and Dika, as well as Randolph Condano helping on this workshop, and you'll see them there in the videos. So today we're focusing on the experiences of smallholder farmers in Brazil using biocontrol to manage all armyworm. And we're lucky enough to have our international expert on this topic who has many, many years of experience uh, of all armyworm management in Brazil, Dr. Ivan Cruz. And Dr. Cruz will present in blocks. Um, what he will do is then split up the presentation and have time for questions and answers uh, throughout his presentation. So this is your opportunity really to ask as many questions as you can from a real expert uh, on this topic. So, so please do so. And the way to do this uh, is really by using the Q&A box. Um, if you can put all your questions in that Q&A box, it really helps us to facilitate the session. Um, that's where I will go to when I want to ask questions to Ivan. Uh, if you want to share any research links, publications, uh, general comments, uh, thank Dr. Cruz for his fantastic presentation. You could do that in the chat. Uh, and we really encourage you to introduce yourself and say hello uh, in that chat box as well to everyone. If you do have any technical problems, um, then what you could try and do is actually just send a message uh, to GrowAsia in the chat box. We can't do too much often if you've got bad uh, or poor internet connection, um, but we may be able to help. Uh, and also what you can do is try logging off and on. That, that's my go-to fix. Something doesn't work. Now, <clears throat> this is a fantastic slide just because it shows all the work that we have uh, completed over the last... 10 or so months. We, this is our ninth session, which is quite unbelievable. It's gone very fast. And we've got a huge amount of resources uh, and, and knowledge that we've shared across these nine sessions or eight sessions so far. And I'd really like to thank all the wonderful speakers and the organizations who have contributed to all of these sessions so far. Uh, it's a fantastic resource. And I encourage you to Go and watch any of these sessions uh, or download the PDF of the presentations uh, on our website uh, at the ASEAN Fall Army Worm Action.org videos. Uh, and today we really end with sort of an integrative workshop because uh, Dr. Cruz is going to sort of tie together many of the messages that we have heard across the whole session. So it's a fantastic opportunity to sort of finish on. Now, what we also encourage is uh, to grow our community uh, of learning and also talk to each other. And if you want a participation certificate, this is also really important because if you can go to www.asianfawaction.org, click on community, you can go to a forum and there's a forum there for biocontrol. And we really encourage you to share your thoughts on this session, uh, ask any questions uh, and also share any of your resources with the community at large. Right, I'm going to launch a poll right now. Um, and this is just really to get to know each other, who's online today. It'll, it'll help uh, Dr. Cruz as well sort of know who's around. And we're really interested to know uh, as well um, how many sessions you've been participating in. So the first one is what stakeholder group best describes the organization you work for? Uh, and you have quite a few different options there. And the second question is, how many workshops have you already participated in? And I'm already seeing that over 30% of you have done five or more workshops, uh, which is incredible. I'll just wait till a few more people have participated. And then I'm going to end the poll.
Okay, and just so uh, Dr. Cruz is aware as well, we seem to have a pretty good split, even split there between research organisations, government representatives, and the private sector. That's around 30% each. So that'll give you a bit of idea of who's on board. And just so you know, oh, we, we definitely, we've got 32% who have spent their time over the last year, uh, five sessions at least uh, on the biocontrol. So we've got um, a really good uh, amount of people who have followed us through the whole sessions. And welcome to all those who um, have joined us for their first time. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to the main part of our session, and I am very pleased to introduce Dr. Ivan Cruz, who is a senior researcher in the Brazilian Company of Agricultural Research, Embrapa, where he serves as the Head of Research and Development and Chief General of Embrapa, Mays and Sorbonne. Ivan has a Master in Integrated Pest Management at Purdue University and a PhD in Entomology uh, from the University of Sao Paulo. His experience in agronomy with emphasis on plant health, working mainly in the area of integrated management with an emphasis on biological control. And he's very passionate about this topic. We've already had a pre-discussion before we uh, came on today, and I'm really excited about uh, this presentation and hearing from him with many years of experience with fall armyworm. Uh, so Ivan, pleasure to have you on board and welcome. If you could load your presentation, it would be great. Just stop my share. That's okay. Uh, just try it again. I can see you at the moment. Just a moment. I really don't know what happened. That's okay, we practiced it before, but I'll just see if, you should be able to share now. Yeah, but, well, just a moment. Should I answer again? Yeah, try, try, it, try sharing it again. Okay. It may have just been because I had my presentation still on. So if you re relaunch the share. And it should come up. We do have your copy anyway, so. Okay. No, I see you at the moment. <laughs> You're looking great. But no, uh, let, me, let, well, let, well, me, okay. let me see. Um, I'm just going to share my screen and then I'm going to stop share. And could you now share your screen? No way. Are you seeing me now? The presentation? No, I can see you. Maybe you're supposed to go back when I'm share. One moment. That maybe I'm going to share again the screen. Yes, exactly. Yes, that's perfect, Ivan. It's okay now? Yeah, if once you click on, I just need to, that's it, perfect. So now it just needs to be full. Excellent, thank you so much and <laughs> welcome. Okay, first of all, I should say good morning for everyone. And for me is good night, it's almost midnight here in Brazil. But, uh, well, I hope that in this today, you can discuss a little bit our experience in Brazil with the control of Spadopta frugiperda in corn or maize. 
Well, I just put this, my, my lab here, this picture uh, represent the trichogram of wasp just living for a uh, flower worm egg. But anyway, and uh, this is the place where I work in Brazil, in Imbrapa. Well, my initial remarks is for the farmer saying that think carefully before deciding to use chemical in family farmer area, especially in family farmer area. There is no silver bullet against Podopter, Fugipiria. And I should say, do not increase the degree of resistance or create a resistant pest. Application error may increase even more pest resistant level and certainly negatively impact the population of beneficial organisms. Avoid the use of the chemical insecticide exactly to give biological control agents the opportunity to adapt to the new host or prey. So it's very important. Anyway, uh, if you're just talking about IPM, necessarily M2 reduction and maintain of the pest population to an acceptable level. Also, do not cause a negative impact on natural biological control agents. You do not cause environment contamination, including all living organisms and research in it. The success of IPM of Spodopter Prugiperda in Brazil depends on knowledge about population fluctuation through the years. And uh, the second question is, what is the best tool for monitoring Spodopter Frigipir? I'm going to show you three situations, different situations. And these three situations, the farmers is used in Brazil. The first one in the left is a pheromone trap. In the middle is a scrapping on leaves, the damage is just uh, caused by newly hatched larvae. And uh, in the right is uh, the symptom of damage, uh, like as uh, some holes on the leaves. Often, unfortunately, the farmer does not have or does not want to use the pheromone trap and use the symptom criterion on the leaves. It's, a, it's not a very good way to go. Just because, look in these two pictures here. In the left, uh, infestation before spraying, just before spray. Uh, when you, the farmer look at an AF is a pheromone trap, FR is crapping on the leaves, and FF a hole on the sheet. Look. If, when you use pheromone trap, if you go to the field and they say that if you capture three moths in the trap, uh, you have the economic injury level and it's supposed to go in the field at, at least and find a maximum of 10% of infested plant, like shown here. But also, for the other criteria, it's supposed to be also 10% of infestation. Here, using scrapping on the leaves, the farm say, well, I have exactly 10% of scrap on the leaves. But in reality, it's not 10% of the infested plant. Well, the reality is that, is that the infestation is over 40%. Percent. If you use the 30 criteria, the hole in the sheet, the farmer think, well, I have 10% of whole plants having hole on the sheet. In reality, he has 56.7% of plants that have at least one larvae. Well, it's interesting because you see, well, 
when you, you don't use the pheromone trap, you have a lot of, uh, the infestation is much higher. And I'll show probably, not probably, it's for sure, the, lar the development stage of the larvae are bigger than when you need to apply any chemical product, for example. Uh, in this case, considering the before spray, if you do the spray here in the right side, you can see the infestation after spray. If I apply using in the plots where you have pheromone trap, the new infestation drop from 10 to 0.9%. And if you just uh, use the scrapping on the leaves, the infestation 43.3 drop by 11.7. And this red line mean the level where I should control the pest. So in using these two criteria, you apply chemical pesticide, but the pest is still over the economic injury level. So for uh, is here, we demonstrate that you can do that. You must use the pheromone trap. O obviously, uh, for the same treatment, the larva mortality is much high, highest, and you use the criteria of uh, trap, pheromone trap, and you use the other criteria is not used. And if you look at the, the last uh, picture here, uh, is it, does it increase corn yield? Well, even uh, uh, in the other criteria, you get some uh, gain in yield. But look, when you use the pheromone trap, the gain is much higher. Well, one thing is interesting. Uh, how, how the farmer should set up the traps? He used here in Brazil a trap, one trap, that cover five hectares. And this trap is put in the, in the field just before planting the corn. And also the level of the trap should be one meter above the ground surface. This is the uh, agronomic process to use traps. And look, this is uh, one uh, picture showing uh, data on daily capture of moss. Uh, this line, the blue line, mean it accumulates three moss per trap. That is economic injury level. Look, uh, do all, this is uh, July to June, one year for several years. The Spodopter frugiperida moss fly basically every day. And if you put here any planting data, you're going to see that you have more than, much more than the minimum necessary to cause damage. So how to control the pest like this? Look, if you just uh, plant in May by September, well, let, let me go to the next slide because this is a, a daily capture, but the more important things is the accumulated number of moss. If I just say that uh, you use three moss is economic injury level, look at that. If you just plant by October to December, we started the, the, the planting time having in the field almost uh, 80 moss per trap. So it's too much. And just for reflection, how many spray would be required through the year. What would be the loss in income if this pest is not properly controlled? When you're talking about chemical application, usually you apply one or two, but the pest continue to eating for a small plant even in the year or in the tassel. So this is why uh, most of the time the farmer is not uh, happy with the result of the co conventional control. Well, there is another reason. I put some crops here that uh, the spadopter like to 
obviously like a lot of corn, but look at this. I really don't know in, in Asia, in the farmer, how many of these uh, hosts is cultivated in this region. But anyway, all of this is easily found in Brazil. Um, yeah, beside the food, so much food, climate condition and abundance of food favor the pest, for sure. Well, we, uh, uh, without the natural biological control agent of the pest, uh, corn yield is greatly reduced uh, depending on when the farmer use, use uh, control measure. I just put this data here just to see when you use an exclusion cage to eliminate new infestation and also eliminate natural enemies. In here, you force in, inside this cage, you have only one generation. What happened? Look at this, this graph here. The spray time after infestation, two, four, six to 16 days. Look, this is grain yield, kilograms per hectare. Look what happened. So, but when you farm say, well, how many time should I use one control measure here that uh, uh, I can protect my yield? Look at this. You just make a calculation about the cost of that curve. Look, when I apply the chemical pesticide four days after infestation, you get the best situation. This is a net gain. Just uh, you compute the chemical per side, com compute everything. Uh, if you apply in this situation, four days after infestation, the gain per hectare will be $53.1. But if you delay a little bit and apply 80 days after infestation, the red number mean they are losing. In most of the time, the farmer is losing when apply the chemical pesticide because, as I told you before, they don't. The farmer do not use the correct uh, uh, monitoring uh, procedure, so most of the time he's going to lose. Well, uh, beside the, the technical. Uh, condition, there is also an environmental factor that uh, just uh, uh, tell us that you should move for another kind of control. Uh, another example, interesting. Uh, look, again, in this experiment, you put the trap. Plenty of time, July 7, trap, July 20, three mail for trap capture in July 24. You spray one, August three, because when you use trap, you're going to apply chemical pesticide or even apply a virus or BT. You just uh, uh, get the economic injury level and apply 10 days later, because if you do that, the larva is the best uh, size uh, to uh, be killed by the uh, chemical or biological spray. Uh, here, uh, just to show you, the uh, and this blue line is an economic injury level, and here is a check, is a natural infestation in a check plot, and uh, the chemical M here, a chemical Z. Look, as the time goes through, we start to, in the case of the check, when infestation, the infested plant, about 30%, and actually the infestation is going slow down and after that increase again. Okay, it's so natural because uh, the insect is just uh, growing, become a pupa and come another population. In the case of the chemical M, they just apply, they drop the, the killed insect, they drop the population, but the, uh, the residual effect is only between 11 and 13 days. 
Uh, in this point here, the population again demand control, but the farmer they don't control anymore because as the maize plant grows, it's hard to uh, identify correctly the damage symptom because the insect is inside the world of the plant. So again, so you see, in this case, the farmer is supposed to put another application. Is it the same for the chemical M or chemical Z? Look at this, it just drop a little bit, immediately the population grows up. Another fact, well, as I told you before, in uncontrolled witness, natural reduction in the past population, but still above the economic injury level, probably by the elimination of natural biological control. Chemical, for, as I told you, after 11 to 13 days application, there is no effect of the product and corn area will be infest with new egg masses and larvae that did not die in the first application. But the farmer is not, got, he's, he's not thinking in apply anymore. So you're going to lose money because he paid for the campus site. The campus site was, was not good, but the larva is still there eating and reduction the yield. Here, you can see what I'm told, I'm just saying. In check, if you look at the distribution of uh, larvae by size, you see check, you have 36.8% uh, of the larvae is 0.5 millimeter. One, one, one 10 centimeter, uh, 10 millimeter, 10.5, 31.6, 21.2. You see, as the time passed through, the insect become bigger, bigger. So you must adjust the chemical dosage. So you increase price uh, and uh, you upset more the environment. So uh, remember here is the day after the second spray. So you are supposed to, Apply uh, 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 to apply again the chemical pesticide. The same product. You see, the black line is for check. Look again. Here is economic injury level. But look at this product M. They don't have any more action. And in the this water here Z is the worst product. You see, you apply but they don't kill the pest. And this is for your country. The, uh, there is a lot of uh, chemical application, but the farmer continue to lose money, lose uh, uh, man, uh, corn yield. And I know that the failure in traditional controls for the frigidaire, you can summarize in incorrect, time to enter control measures, is spraying without considering plant or pet size, water volume, nozzle type. There is no monitoring, incorrect product choice, elimination of natural enemies, lack of knowledge of natural enemies in past population resistant to the insecticide applied. I know this very well, because I travel many times for Africa. And in the first time, uh, there is a pressure to put too many pet sites. And uh, some country in Africa, the uh, subterranean water is very close to the surface. So it'd be a terrible thing to apply camp pet site there. Well, uh, if you have any question here, Hi, Ivan. Yes, you have lots of questions. Obviously, you've already um, caused quite a bit of interest. Uh, and I guess uh, a quick question here around pheromone traps. Uh, how do you get farmers to use pheromone traps? I mean, you've just outlined how important and useful they are. So how do you encourage farmers to use them if, as you're saying, they don't always want to use them? 
Well, maybe you're going to, to talk in the next. Part. Okay, excellent. That's a good segue for that one. Here's a question from Julius. Uh, what is the difference between, uh, I guess, integrative and biocontrol for Paul Armyworm? Uh, I guess, integrated pest management and biocontrol. Well, uh, I, I should say that we can do IPM using only biocontrol. Uh, <laughs> IPM is using more than one major that can do the work. But if you look at uh, the history of IPM, it just uh, arises because of the chemicals. Uh, so uh, this is different uh, philosophy. But when you go to the field, you see, you are talking about here about foul armyomes, Pedopter fujiperda. So you're going to apply chemical pesticide uh, and say, well, this is an integrated pest management. Well, apply the chemical pesticide, the pesticide just kill. There is side effect, kill natural enemies that uh, usually maintain another species of phytophagous insect under control. So maybe you control a little bit the main pest, but other pests just change the status, become a, a, a primary pest. And there is no way to get to integrate pest managed uh, for a complex of pests using chemical pesticide. And okay. you see, I, I understand that Spodopt is a very important pest, but uh, maybe most of you remember some years ago, the Helicovet Parmigera come to Brazil and uh, there is no Armigera in Brazil. You have Helicovet Parmigera. And the farmer do say, well, how, what should I do? In the, well, the farmer just uh, buy a lot of chemical pesticide. And two years later, the Helicovet Parmigera is not that problem. Because here, and we know this because Helicoverpa zia, there is a lot of natural enemies, including mm -hmm. trichogramma. So the Helicoverpa zia just cannot uh, become a key pest here. So mm -hmm. maybe it's, it's a good question. Maybe when I'm going to talk about sobre biocontrol, maybe you can just uh, return to discuss this point. Okay, excellent. Just a couple of quick questions. We've got lots of questions here, but I know you've got lots to talk about as well. What is your recommendation based on the number of males caught in the pheromone traps as the action threshold? You mean the, the, the three moths? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, well, this is, uh, you, you worked in these for uh, some years ago. You published a paper. The okay. International Internal Pest Management. And uh, maybe you can uh, discuss a little bit later because, uh, well, you, you're just starting capturing moths every day. You just uh, make some uh, correlation with the uh, yield, the number of egg masses, and so forth. And okay. you validate this as you, I showed you before. Why three? Because if you, well, obviously, you use the biology of the insect, the potential egg mass uh, production by one female. And if you just consider quickly that one female has the potential to lay a thousand eggs, so three, uh, three moths, uh, considering that you have uh, 3,000 uh, larvae, if you consider a maize plant, a maize crop with 15,000 plants, you can see that, that the number of uh, uh, infested plants is enough to reduce mm -hmm. the yield, at least equal the cost of the technology to control. Okay. In summary. Just, okay. just quickly, here's another question. You uh, applying, for example, you talked about applying four days after infestation um, or within a short time period after infestation. Um, but what is the meaning of infestation? Is it meaning you've reached the data scale three or when do you count infestation from? You are talking about that graph, you know, that they show that four days is the best to control. Yes, yes, so, so what do you count as, I guess, the starting point well, of infestation? Uh, well, you see, you see in, in that case, you just isolate 
uh, infestation and isolate natural enemies. So you put the, uh, the insect, small, small larvae, new hatched larvae, and in each two days we apply the pesticide. What do you say? When you apply the insecticide four days after the infestation, the larva is, the maze is very small, the larva is very small, and they are killed easily. Mm -hmm. When you just, uh, the, some days later, well, the larva, in this case, for those pesticides that you use, they could not uh, kill enough larvae to reduce the number of insects below economic injury level. Okay. This, you see, uh, this experiment it is not so real because if you remember the fluctuation of the spodoptera mm. in the field, every day, the moss is just come. But you, uh, th 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 those, th those uh, pictures is due to show you are, if you have only one generation yeah. is one situation, but you don't have this because if you look at that second graph that they show that the two uh, spraying, you see, you can have larvae, small one, egg masses, middle size, big ones. So this is hard to do that. So uh, the reason is, is just because you have uniformity of the larvae and the chemical was well applied. Okay. okay, just just quickly, um, Ivan, because I know I know we want to move on, but I've got one uh, question here that I think is quite interesting, because um, we have a big focus on maize, um, and I guess you you brought up a, a table there of other vegetable crops and and other crops that were impacted by fall armyworm. Um, Graham from New Zealand says, I've only found it on corn and maize in Southeast Asia over the last one point five years since it arrived in Vietnam and Cambodia. So what are the real or true hosts? I understand it prefers grasses, but I've not observed fall armyworm on other leafy and fruiting vegetables yet in Southeast Asia. How, how bad is the impact on those other crops that, or, or vegetable? Well, uh, if I catch well what you're saying, you mentioned the, uh, rice uh, also, is that right? Right. Yeah, no, that, I don't think we've seen really any, uh, at this point, any real impact other than on maize. Uh, there's been a few anecdotal, uh, I guess, uh, ob observations of fall armyworm on other. I think there's been some attack on sugar, uh, for example, sugar cane. How bad in Brazil is the impact on those other crops other than the maize? Well, I, I should say... <laughs> And most of the time, someone increase the importance of spadopter on those crops. You, uh, in the case of rice, there is another strain. The strain that uh, we found in maize can eat and cause big problem in rice. The strain from rice usually don't attack maize. Uh, you see, now you you are just seeing that uh, uh, sugarcane. There is no problem. Okay. There is problem in the cotton mm -hmm. because in this case they are just feeding on the the apple. Mm -hmm. And in the case of soybean, because spadopia is just eating uh, the in the grain in the how to say in the final season of the soybean. But mm -hmm. as a leaf feeding, no, uh, the maize is the one one good host for spadop. So uh, okay. you, you see, even if you, you are worrying about these insects, uh, maize is the real problem. The other crop, oh, the insect can survive in this, those crops. But it's not uh, usually, you don't put a chemical pesticide to control on these uh, other crops. Okay, excellent. So, um, 
Ivan, if you could continue on with your presentation, I know you've got lots of slides, so we don't want to run out of time. Uh, that would be great, and, and I'll just keep the questions going in the in the next uh, next section. Okay. Thank you. Well, so you are proposing biological it's management of the pest in a participatory system. What I'm saying here. Well, you know that uh, currently there is a strong global movement questioning the use of fossil and non-renewable research in production system. There is a clear vision of the need to change the production system. So what I want really, you want to replace chemical, maintain the same level of control of the target pest and sustainable reducing environment risk. So this is why we implement this, this new view to managing insect. And also you must reconstructing wildlife beneficial organisms, but not only to reconstruct those beneficial organisms to control sped up, no. Is just to control the complex of pest uh, in the production system for maize and other crop. Uh, you should believe it. Quickly, I'm going to show this. I don't know if you know this kind of uh, predator. It's very interesting uh, for a, a nice surprise because I make this film in Mali, in Africa. So there is a lot of uh, insect that even we don't know if they are benefic or not. Just uh, believe that the natural enemies can do the difference. Well, this is a, a, a techno meeting on biological control in Mali. Mali, uh, has already a biofactory producing trichogram. This was interesting. For, uh, I went there first, uh, first time in, in 2010, and six, six, six years later, I go, went back there. But what I'm talking about is this, this a network connection for quick information sharing, a very well trained actor and the beneficiary of the set. What I have here, I have a group of farmer, you have a platform, it could be WhatsApp, you have a biofactory consult, here can be extensionist uh, uh, researchers. And so you're training all these people, train all of them. Well, you should do this to control this product, product or other past. And once you get a decision about control, the farmer should act. What is the, let me see. Well, this is a farmer a biofactor trichogram. But what is, how should work uh, this connection? First of all, there is meeting to register interest group, as I told you, farmer, consultant, scientist, biofactor, training, at all stage of the program in promoting the empowerment of the all involved, a communication through WhatsApp to share immediately with the group any question. And uh, the, the, there is one or more responsible to ensure immediately answer to the question uh, raised by the farmers. So online training and uh, there's a connection operation uh, the tools is a ferment trap, biological product will be trichogram and or the use of baculovirus or BT. Uh, you discuss a lot agriculture or agro-industrial process or, or that, it, that is production and field insertion of the biological product and protocols for monitoring, collection and identification of natural enemies. This is a view, interesting view. You, you can you work even in the 200 farmer. So the, the, uh, once all farm are received training, 
I just put this farm here. They say, well, in my place, there is three moss. You capture three moss, farm your moss. They go to the platform and everyone here, the all of farmer, and um, all the people know the situation for these two. And once this farmer get the economic injury level, the biofactor just to pro provide the trichogramma, provide the product and also help to release in the field. Well, the best uh, natural enemy that we have is trichogramma. The reason for that does not use water and you should save water and leaves no environmental liabilities. It's a too good advantage. And there is high mobility. Insect uh, easily find uh, the egg masses. Once they used to find the egg masses, they put it on eggs and the control, uh, the efficiency of control is very high. And the farmer can just find the success of the control just because uh, four days after the parasitism, the all eggs uh, get uh, black in color. But you also have the telenomus gemus, that's very good. Both are very good. Trichogramus is easy to produce in biofactory. And uh, the telenomus gemus is a little bit more expensive, but both are very good. Just showing you this. Active, very good both. And uh, you should consider that uh, the number of generation during this 150 days from the corn cycle, Spodopter can give five generation in trichogram or telenomus 15, a three by one. So this is one uh, reason why this egg parasitoid is so efficiency. Well, uh, depend, depend on the, the, the area size, you can just uh, use the trichogramma by hand, but a big area you, in our lab, you just formulated the trichogramma inside this, this capsule, and these uh, are applied by drone. And we know in the case of space, you just uh, make the flight plan and say, well, uh, just release one capsule in each 16 meter and go to the end of the, the field, turn on the left or right, just fly 25 meters and go back doing the same thing easily. In a small way, uh, you see here, you say the drone just applying easily. Is uh, today is uh, uh, the farmer wants to have this because they think yes for for sure he going to abandon the uh, the tractor and just move for this uh, very very too a small tool and cheap it all. And this is what we're doing here to apply. There is a, a lot of way to apply trichogramma. So you can just uh, with discards, just impregnate and this, uh, also discard or using in this capsule easily. In a small farm, I just can do this, put in this uh, uh, vial and just to wait the adult emergence, the fly and just to go and do the job. Easily. And uh, one good advantage, why you can put this in points, only uh, 20, 25 points, uh, when you consider that they, when you're going to spray, you must spray in the in all plants, and just because they just search. So when the plant is very small, we speed, there is a, a gain in speed in the search for the eggs, and in general, uh, you can just, uh, 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 the efficiency is much higher when the maze is very small. I believe that uh, the trichogram as a social technology should be indeed uh, applied in Africa and Brazil and uh, in Asia, because when you put this insect here, you construct the population. So you maintain this product under control. And as I told you, instead of, uh, for example, Brazil, we use to release uh, 60,000 60, female 
by head theory. You change this a little bit, you say, well, instead of release the 60,000, uh, just split in three times, applying just 20,000 female per hectare. Why this is, is good? Because you see, when you just release 60,000 eggs, parasitized eggs, or adult eggs, or females, you're going to get a new generation 10 days later. So uh, between the day one and day 10, if there is any egg masses between, there is no trichogram to control. So you split uh, in three time. So you're going to have uh, more uh, trichogram female here at uh, 10 days later, 13 days, 16 days. So you just build up the, the uh, trichogram uh, population. This uh, works nicely. Well, it, it, the farmer can just check up if that is okay. Well, if there is uh, 20,000 females, I'm sorry, it's in, in Portuguese, or hectare, I just go to the field and say, look at uh, 100 plants and count the number of egg masses. If there is eight egg masses, it's enough to release this. If you release 40,000, you can just have a maximum of 16. So you can just easily uh, check the uh, safety of release the trichogram of female with the ability to, to parasitize 60 eggs. Well, uh, when you release the trichogram, the farmer notes the increase of biodiversity. In this case, I'm going to show you this picture here show one hectare and uh, the red dots of oh, the the red dot on the cobblestone represent the pest and it is man forgive me no. uh, the red point is the parasitoids larval parasitoid and the high of this uh, cobblestone here is the infestation of larvae. Look at this yellow color, there is few red dots, but because the number of larvae is so low. But anyway, the farmer don't know this. So it applied chemical pesticide in this situation here, probably going to kill some of this insect, but it's going to be very bad against natural enemies. And why I'm saying that? Because here I'm showing you uh, some 10 municipality in Brazil, and at least one, two, three, four, five very, very good natural enemies, larval parasitoid. This uh, red dot here is called Campoletis flavicinta. I know that uh, Pelonus insularis, maybe, I don't know, maybe after someone can say if there is one of these natural enemies in the Asia area. But you see, they are very, very common. So together with the release of trichogramma and with this uh, larval parasitoid, why are you going to apply campesite? If I have too much natural enemies, I'm going to put chemical to kill this and uh, the farmer become dependent on the, the chemical, no. You must just uh, know your biodiversity. Look, uh, remember that I do tell about this Campoletis flavicinta, this one in red. Look at here. Uh, this is 14.5 square centimeter is the amount of uh, the consumption of uh, food of this insect. When the, the larva is a health larvae, it can just uh, uh, eat 209 centim square centimeter of leaves. So there is a reduction in 93% of food intake, just for this campolets. And look here, one, one female can parasitize 200 larvae. So this insect, if you look by 
one by one is more efficient than a tree program. So, but uh, you don't have this uh, insect in biofactories. Look quickly, uh, just because how it's happened in the field. The very small in wasp called Campolette flavicinca. This is a male. It is, all these small larvae are parasitized. So the, being said, they just uh, look, when you find the female, there are some behavior differential behavior. The ovipositor is out, and the, the female is going to look for a health larvae and use the antenna to, to see if it confirms if there is a health larvae like this one here, and immediately put his egg inside. So you see, it is a very interesting uh, biocontrol. This larva is really. Uh, uh, there is no way because they're going to reduce the food intake. Another one, Kelonus insularis, a big one, a very big one co considering the eggs of Spodopter fugitive. Look at these two, two larvae here. They were born in the same day. So a healthy larvae and a parasitized larvae just before that. So there is a lot of case. Look at this, the tachinidae fly. And uh, in, this, in the case of this species, they put the eggs inside, the, close to the head of the spodopter. Uh, even, you, 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 uh, we know that it's a big one, but if you consider uh, the maize can uh, is cultivated during all the, the year. So it's a good one too. So you have a lot of these. Uh, also, it's interesting because you are interested in maintaining the chrysopids in the field because uh, uh, aphid, usually when there is uh, some disequilibrium in the field, aphid come and you, you are just preparing also uh, production this uh, insect and release in a small farmer. Earwig is it the best natural enemies that you have. This earwig is called daughter tapes. It's not from Brazil, it's from uh, maybe from Africa or Asia. Uh, I believe that's Asia. Uh, this is actually lives almost one year and they eat a lot of eggs and uh, eggs and larvae of Spodoptera, Yenicoverpa. Look, the amount of, of uh, egg consumed by one insect, just one insect. So uh, Brazil now for uh, the farmer, the small farmer, that those farms that don't put uh, came to Peside, uh, just uh, using these natural enemies to get uh, a good job. Well, you have this Podizus, an excellent predator of Spodoptera, also is being hairy in uh, biofactory. Using this insect, I don't know if it's a common in uh, Africa, the Tenebrium, where they use this pupa of Tenebrium as a food source for this predator. Oh, Jesus, very, very good to control Spodoptera. Então, you see, this amount of uh, newly, newly hatching uh, for Jesus. Well, uh, also, Zelos is a species that is very important to control Spodoptera. No, no, not only Spodoptera, but uh, when this insect is present in the field, usually, the, the damage of Spodopter is do not uh, demand control. I just put this, I don't know if it's a common in, in, uh, in Asia, but this is the egg masses. And uh, usually you're just uh, hatching this small larvae. It's interesting because you need it in the connection, a communication, because usually the farmer think that this is a pest because they don't know, because the appearance of this, uh, insects is different from the others, but they are just uh, uh, the newly born, newly hatching zealous, they just uh, sucking this newly hatching spodoptera. And you are working also with all these um, uh, lady beetles. Harmonia. I believe this harmonia comes from Asia too. It's a very nice to, to eat in, in eggs of Spodoptera. You see, they, they, they eat a lot. 
And interesting because you are just uh, uh, hearing these lady beetles using the, this is uh, Anagasta puniella, that is, this is the egg that you use to produce trichogramma. So in the fact that you produce trichogramma, you can also produce uh, the lady, ladybugs. So you can just uh, uh, produce more than one species if with the same food source. This is another one. The insect, uh, the Ops connects uh, another lady, very, very interesting. Well, just to finish, I say it's very interesting that the farmer should think about the conservative biological control. And you use in Brazil the sun, the Mexican sunflower. But in reality, I believe that this is uh, from Africa. I've had a lot of this uh, plant. Well, uh, just to finish it, I say if farm eliminated the biological control agent, you will inherit their labor, which was free. Well, thank you very much. I, I hope that you, you could understand a little bit, at least uh, reading uh, the slides. But now, uh, if there is any question, I'd be very glad to talk to you. You see, uh, basically today, the Brazilian government just uh, create the national program of uh, input, biological input, and exactly to increase the number of commercial uh, brands of the biocontrol. Uh, in the case of insect, for sure, a trichogramma is uh, one of more useful in biofactory. And this is the reason why you talk too much. You see, this small insect here is Talenomus hemus. This is a, a silk, you know, maize silk. And, but you have a lot of this insect too. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, that, that was an incredible presentation. There's so much detail in there. And just to um, assure everyone, uh, you have uh, you will have a copy of the, the PDF. It will be shared and also the video. So don't worry, you'll be able to go back. Uh, and you've got lots of great comments already, Ivan, one of the best presentations that somebody says. So um, we've got lots of questions and, and good amount of time to ask them. Um, one of the questions here is about the natural enemies. You, you talked about how sometimes farmers might perceive some of those as pests so that you need some sort of educational communication to inform farmers about the benefits. What, what do you think works best in communicating that to farmers? What, what's worked best in Brazil, for example, to try and teach them about the beneficial? Well, you see, okay, we, when you bring together all the, those people uh, that work with maize uh, using the connection, you discuss all of these because uh, when you put the, the WhatsApp, you have a, a bank of data and picture about past natural enemies. And uh, if uh, you recommend that the farmer, they just take picture of the time and immediately put uh, in the, the WhatsApp and uh, there is in the other side, someone they say, well, if you don't know this species, if this species is not in the, in the, in the cell phone, well, not going to in, uh, in put a, this insect and the correct name is A, B, C, D, and uh, is a natural enemy and should just uh, preserve. I don't know if okay. this is the right case, but you have a very nice program of communication. But uh, uh, the communication started much before. In the connection, yeah. you say, sit down and say, let discuss in the lab, go to the field, and know the, the eggs of, separate eggs of the past from the eggs from the natural enemies and so forth. Okay, so it's really important to include farmers as a central part of that communication and, and actually, as you say, really talk and discuss what's actually happening in the field. Um, I've got a question then on that. Um, which way is, or which ways are more effective in making farmers have access to natural enemies? Whether should they rear it at their farms, or should there be certain agents selling the products around the farms? 
No, I, I, I ask you to <laughs> repeat for me. Yes, yeah, sorry, no, no I, I'm reading the question. No, I think this is an example where, where you're introducing natural enemies to the farms. What do mm -hmm. you think works best? Is it for the farmers themselves to rear to rear these natural enemies in, in say, little biocontrol factories? Or do you have agents who produce them and then sell them to the farmers? What what works best? But, well, it, but, well uh, what I, if you look at that... Uh, connection, uh, you are just uh, telling the, pro the, the farmer to get the, your own biofactory. Mm -hmm. Because today, Brazilian government is favoring the farmer, or at least not a, a, an individual farmer, but to my association of, of farmer. And uh, the research institution such as Embrapa, it help a lot. So while well, you say, well, uh, but this is not the case because uh, there is, you've considered that uh, the prices of this natural meat is, is not so high. It's the same of the campus side. So uh, yeah. uh, what I say, well, trichogram is, is the best to use, but mm -hmm. there, is, there is the only one. So uh, those people, that participate of the, the connection, they receive in the first year, they receive for free the trap and the, the pheromone, the, the okay. trap and the trichogram. So they receive for free. Oh, uh, by the time when you take the decision to use the extension, people go together at the farmer place and both. Uh, release and make all the measurement, uh, make the evaluation, show uh, the the black wish of the egg masses. But this isn't a second step because in the when be, much before in the capacitation they learn about that. So if you look at the slide, one thing, but if you look at the, the field, it's another thing. But uh, without this uh, connection, uh, uh, one by one farmer, they don't do nothing correct there. This is one problem because there is a lot of people that say to farmer, well, look, if you don't apply this product, you're going to lose. Yep. The farmer just go and buy, apply the product. So the task is not so easy to get the biocontrol. But if the farmer learn and know one insect. And when you see this insect in his place, well, it's good. Uh, there is one thing I don't know uh, about in Asia. Usually, when the farmer is a woman, the, the woman usually accept much easier the biocontrol. Usually the man is to say, well, if I use this biocontrol, my neighbor is using chemical, but you are just change. We select, first of all, a small farmer uh, producing only maize for grain, but also those fa farmer that use the, the grain or the, the maize for cattle food, for milk production. Yeah. So they don't want to put camp aside. So this is Re and once you get a, a good result, as a matter of fact, one, one case that you work with this, this farmer uh, to produce uh, forage of the maize, uh, the, the, the result was sent to the FAO. Yeah. So you see, he did this good example that helped to uh, include more and more more pharma. Uh, uh, but Excellent. my constraint is that Brazil, there is a lot of people uh, try to uh, manipulate and avoid that farmers become uh, uh, normal, uh, make use normally uh, of biocontrol. Yeah. 
No, excellent, excellent, um, excellent description. I mean, there's, there's a lot there to to digest. I, I've got a, a maybe a bit more of a specific question here about the catch. Alison? Yes. Can you hear me, Ivan? Can you hear me now? Oh, I'm not sure. Ivan, can you hear me? Uh, let me just see. I think we've just lost Ivan. Um, I'm just going to check. Putra, can you hear me? I lost you. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, Ivan, I can hear you now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Petra. laughs> we lost you. Uh, don't go. Um, no, listen, um, we've got so many questions. Here's a very specific question. It was quite an interesting um, example you gave about the drones and the um, use of the capsules. And uh, two questions here. Um, does the capsule melt on its own after an hour or do you need to open the capsule prior to release in the field? How, how does that capsule work? Uh, and releasing the trichogramma. How I how I release this? Yeah, how does the capsule? Because I think you had them in like little pills or capsules that you were dropping across the field. Does the uh, capsule no, no. just it, break it, apart? It's, it's, no, it depends on the size of the farmer. Ah, uh, yeah, right? okay. Okay, because you see, if you have a small farmer, usually you can just uh, walk around the farm. Yeah. Because exactly. if you consider uh, by a hectare only 20 points, so yeah, you just, exactly. just pick a, a one capsule and put in the place. It's easily, much easier. Because so, the thing, the, when you spray, even if you spray baculovirus, for example, we need to have the tractor. You need to yeah. have the water, the fuel is so expensive. But no, I, no, I totally, I understand that. But do, how? What is the mechanism of the capsule? I guess it just dissolves after a certain amount of time, or I, people just want to know how the little pill, I guess, disintegrates yeah. and when. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Another question here. Uh, we've got quite a lot, so we'll try and we'll try and get through. Um, here is. I'm just looking because we've got a lot of questions. I'm going to try and choose a few. Um, one is uh, oh, actually a question around the, you, you said, which was very interesting, that the farmer is given a trap and is then given um, the resources and tools and sort of a, 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 a kind of, I guess, selection of things to use for, for this um, biological control. Is that free? Are they given like a free lure and a free, uh, or do they pay a small amount for that? No, yeah, you see, there is two things. Uh, in, the, in the beginning, it's free. Yeah. But the, the, there is also uh, the extension, extension institution. Uh, our, it already is setting up the biofactory just to give for free for the farmer. Is, uh, is in terms of uh, uh, extension or institution or even some university. Okay. It used to pr produce and uh, give for free. My, my idea is that uh, the, the, if the farmer need and they're going to use, for example, trichogram, you stipulate a price and they can pay in, uh, in, in grain. But just to maintain the biofactory, yep. as uh, you see, it is a, a public extension service. Yep. It's not the private extension, but they, yep. they get for free for the first time. Okay. Uh, Even okay. The, the capacitation is for free. Okay, no, that's a, that's a really good point. Um, listen, a question that we've had here is, but what about, uh, BT corn. What about genetically modified corn? I mean, how how do we incorporate that with biocontrol? And can well, it, should it? I, I, if I catch, I believe that is easier to get the biocontrol for those people that uh, is not a, a farmer, is a who just work with cattle. They they it accept more quickly that the the, the Common farmer. 
Yeah. If you consider a big one. The thing is, do, let me do, just uh, say to you, the big farmer has airplane to apply chemical. Yeah. Or have that big sprayer is almost uh, five thousand dollar is very very expensive when they are just a change because today you can buy uh four drone in a, a small software that you control in one hour the application of four drone each one apply in 100 hectare that mm -hmm. is with the four um, drone, you apply in four, 400 hectare. So it much, much uh, cheaper. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting one about the drones. Do you think therefore, I mean, drones can help reduce pesticide application because they can be more precise, but could they also end up encouraging more use of pesticide because they're, uh, can do it more efficiently and faster. Are there, there right. there's, I'm just thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are, there's obviously great positives with the use of drones for precision agriculture, but are there concerns that we need to also keep in mind around the fact that they could end up being used to apply more pesticide? Yeah. What's your experience in Brazil? Well, you see, uh, first of all, our law is pressuring each time against the chemical pesticide. This is one thing. Biocontrol, if I catch your, your question, biocontrol, uh, the only reason why you get success, you can just say is just because the trichogramma. Just because it is easy, it's cheap, it's efficient, and yeah. you can just supply. There is one point. There is another point that I should mention. Uh, when in the biofactory, today you produce a dosage for one hectare, you just pay half and a dollar, mm -hmm. 50 cents. So very cheap. Well, in the use, as a food source for hearing the insect to produce the eggs. And there is a, a waste. This waste material is a, a mixture of flour. You can just, uh, you can just uh, have a, a, a good opportunity to give this food for fish. Okay. And there's a very nice for fish. So in this case, you are just in, uh, decrease the price. So I believe that this is the risk. Uh, another thing that I should mention, because uh, Brazil is small pharma, is also increasing so much the organic production. Yep. And uh, for this reason, we have today only for maize, you have a, a solubilizer of phosphorus, you have the baculovirus, Bt, and trichogram. So it depends on the, 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 the type of uh, exploration, uh, field exploration. Uh, obviously, uh, for the big farmers say, well, uh, uh, there is, I need the trichogram. Maybe the, the only big limitation of trichogram is that, well, I need it tomorrow. The biofacts yeah. can give me this. Well, uh, impossible. So, my, but we know you can just change, you use uh, low temperature, it solve the problem. But I believe that in Brazil, is what I'm going to have uh, the distribution for several biofactory okay. because uh, it's very cheap. 
Yeah. But I don't know the, this is the right question that you ask me. No, no, that's okay. That's okay because it's ext extremely interesting. Um, but I do have, just before we go, we've got a bit of a time pressure and I've got quite a few questions about these capsules. <laughs> Obviously, this was of real interest and um, it, we've got some questions here. If you could answer these quite quickly, um, Ivan, we've got how many parasitoids are in a capsule? Is it a gelatin capsule? Uh, and also how many grams of trichogramma, same question, should we put per capsule? So people are really interested about this uh, as, a, as a tool. You mean how many what? How many? So how many parasitoids or how many grams of the trichogramma would you put in each capsule? It's a very specific question here. No, 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 you, 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 you see uh, that the capsule to use yes. the, the, the drone. The little, exactly, the little capsule that you're putting into ah, the field. Yeah. They want well, to know what's in there and how much of the uh, trichogram. Well, uh, yeah, you cannot uh, put uh, completely full. We put uh, between three and uh, 500, 5,000. Oh, wow, okay. You see, oh, if you if the recommendation is 20, 25 per hectare, so if you uh, 100,000, so if you divide by 20, it's, oh, the best way is just uh, five, it's, uh, exactly, 4,000, it's okay. Uh, you should, we should say interesting, uh, I believe that the question could be, well, how many holes should have in the capsule? Yeah. Well, you, you, you use it four different holes in different spaces. Because the trichogram, he don't want, they don't like uh, darkness. Ah, okay. He, he, he want, just want to look for light. In this case, it's easy to see. Well, uh, once they just uh, emerge from the, the, the pupa, they just look at the hole in, in a way. Okay, excellent. Uh, that, that was a superb um, presentation, and but we have to draw it to a close because you, you'll be losing your voice soon, I think, uh, Ivan, because you've spoken so much, but um, you shared so much of value with us. Um, it's extremely, um, extremely um, valuable uh, and important to sort of get those messages out there and learn from your experience in, in um, Brazil. Uh, let, me, let, let, uh, let, you said, let me comment something. Yes, go when, on, I please. when I when I present one uh, talk with uh, mm -hmm. for the plant plant wise people from uh, Pennsylvania State University, well, uh, they recommend the people that uh, still there is some question that could be sent me by WhatsApp with all the questions and immediately I I answer all of them. Uh, I just apologize because I was talking with uh, Alison. <laughs> yeah, there is a, a lot of difficulty for me to understand very well the, the, the accent. But anyway, oh. I'll be here for any time. Thank you so much, and you don't need to apologize. I have a very strong accent too, and we all, that's part of working internationally is to understand and communicate and, and take that into account. Um, what a fantastic presentation though, um, Ivan, really very appreciative of your time that you've spent with us. I know it's very late in Brazil, but I think it's a really powerful way of um, sharing our work and learning uh, is actually uh, having people like you who have spent many years in the field working with smallholder farmers, uh, sharing sharing your um, learnings and experience with us. So thank you so much. And just before we go, I just um, want to, uh, I'm gonna ask Randolph and Putra, um, they're uh, our project assistants in the ASEAN Action Plan. And I wanted to give them the opportunity today to, to each give three takeaways from the session. So um, Randolph, do you wanna start? Yeah, sure, Dr. Allison. Oh, oh uh, by the way, thank you, Dr. Iban Cruz, and uh, hello, everyone who are watching around the globe. I would like to emphasize the potential of uh, biological control, since uh, biological control is a uh, practical uh, solution for uh, managing the fall armyworm. 
because it is environmentally friendly, it is uh, socially acceptable, it is for humans, safe for humans and animals, and it is sustainable. The use of uh, biological control for the control of uh, fall armyworm has a uh, host of uh, benefits in terms of uh, location. The biological control agents are naturally found in the area, so the introduction does not pose a threat of uh, turning a non-native species into an invasive species in the area or region. Second, in terms of cost, mass rearing the uh, biological control agents is uh, cost effective. In fact, we can establish a uh, rearing facility in a uh, village level involving farmers. And third, some biocon agents can be a natural enemy to many pests. So with this, with the uh, use of uh, biological control agents, it is important to determine the best or uh, appropriate time to employ other control, especially uh, chemical control, or do we still need to apply chemicals at all? And secondly, in terms of uh, monitoring uh, fall armyworm, since early detection is important to control the spread of uh, fall armyworm, using specific pheromones, traps can uh, be used to monitor target pests, and in our case, of fall armyworm. Please take note that while the use of uh, pheromones can be used to suppress the male ability to locate females for a mating and uh, potentially reducing the uh, number of offspring, pheromones are uh, mainly used for monitoring. Please take note of that. And also, please take note of the different host plants of uh, fall armyworm, because while we are controlling fall armyworm in corn, we also need to control fall armyworm in other crops, because these crops might be the source of fall armyworm that will eventually infest our corn. And uh, lastly, let us relay this information and uh, technology to our farmers who are the one who really need this information. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Randolph. Putra, do you want to quickly summarize from your perspective? Yeah, thank you, Allison, and thank you, Dr. Cruz, for the great presentation. So some of the takeaway homes that I can take from this presentation was that there's no silver bullet for pest management. So understanding population dynamics is very important and it's a first step for pest management, um, especially when you're using biocontrol in your fields. Um, number two is biocontrol um, must be explored. Um, like as Randolph has said, um, it is safe for the environment. Um, they um, are naturally in the field. So um, taking advantage of those natural populations or even adding some um, would be beneficial. And then the third one is to enhance the success of biocontrol, effective communication, um, using um, medias that farmer uses, um, telling the right content, um, maybe these, these insects are natural enemies and these ones are not. And then building cooperation cooperations with these farmers in ways where um, they can easily benefit from these programs um, is very important for the success of biocontrol. Thank you, Allison. Okay. Thank you, Petra. Thank you. And there's just two things that I really liked as well. I like the trichogramma as a social technology. I really like that statement, um, Ivan. I think use pheromone traps seemed to me a bit of a no-brainer. Um, and it really helped with that early detection, which is critical, and that farm is essential to the process. So, uh, look, just a fantastic seminar. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to everyone. Um, this is the very last of our 2021 20, uh, series. It's been a big one, um, but we've, we've ended on a great note, um, thanks to uh, Dr. Cruz. So please join us on our community through our forum. Uh, please make uh, any comments there. What I'm gonna do is take a list of all the questions that haven't been answered today, and I'm going to try and get those answered and actually post them on the forum with uh, Ivan and Randolph and Putra's uh, help. Uh, so just before you go, please keep safe, everyone. Um, look after each other and uh, keep up the uh, focus on biocontrol and the passion for uh, making change uh, and helping our farmers in the field. Thank you very much, Ivan, for joining us. Thank you to Randolph and Putra as well. Um, good night or good morning uh, and have a lovely day. Thank you. Uh, and if you're still there, oh, sorry, um, you are welcome to just uh, do our poll if I can find it. Which I can't.
which I cannot do at the moment. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Okay. Well, let me only uh, talk something. Biological control cannot be think only for Spabopter for the period. Yeah. I, be I believe that the biocontrol is a new 